Good morning. I'm usually very comfortable with public speaking, but being here in this very special space in front of all of you is undeniably intimidating. What gets me past this intimidation and fear of speaking today is my desire to share some lessons and life morals. The very best way I can do that is through my own experiences. I hope that my journey will help someone or at least make you look at high school differently. My Brooks career began like that of many high school freshmen, anxious, lonely, and scared I would never figure things out. To make things even more complicated, I was a day student and a theater kid, and there were not many of us at that time. I couldn't identify it back then, but I later realized it was an overwhelming feeling of newness, of unfamiliarity that was crashing down on me. I was totally on my own in a place without anyone to turn to. I remember sitting on a couch in the library and crying on my first day of school because it was all just too much. I'll spare you the details, but let's just say my freshman year wasn't great, and I genuinely don't remember most of it. It's a blur of locked away memories. I can look back at my poor freshman self and now say there is a redemption arc to this miserable start of a story. It came later than I had wanted, and it took work and time. But my standing here today telling the story is proof that it did. Each year was better than the last until I arrived here. The weirdest senior year ever. But hey, all's well that ends well. Spending time by myself is something I have become well acquainted with at Brooks and it allowed me to get to know myself very well. I don't mean to suggest that it was always fun, but it had a positive outcome. Lesson one, I learned how to sit with myself and just listen to my thoughts, the quiet ones and the loud ones. Being alone with yourself is a skill, and it's one I genuinely feel most people don't have. It makes sense that this is a hard skill to develop. Humans are social creatures especially at a boarding school, where during nearly every part of your day, you are surrounded by other people, from the dining hall to the dorm, to the classroom, to afternoon activities. It's hard to be alone, even if you want to be. And even when you are alone, there's social media. Luckily, my Instagram addiction hadn't fully developed by this point. By spending so much quality time with myself, I was able to feel out my boundaries. When did I like to be alone? When did I like to be with other people? And who did I like to be around? All this time spent thinking and recognizing my boundaries made me also realize I was done playing games with my time. For much of middle school, I had allowed people who didn't truly care about me to eat up too much of my energy, and I was determined that wouldn't happen again. Well, that's easier said than done. Lesson two, patience. Good things come to those who wait. It took time for me to find my people. In some cases, several weeks from the start of high school. In other cases, it took years. But it happened. One way or another, my patience paid off. I refused to let desperation or fear make my decisions for me. I don't regret the time I spent waiting and wondering if I would ever find my friends because it meant I never repeated my past mistakes. All of the friends I have made haven't drained my life. They've enriched it. They've made my life more fun, more exciting. High school is what you make it, and they have helped make it really good. Now, let's take a step back from the life lessons and recount some of the ways my friends have made my life wonderful over the past four years. There are truly too many to count, but I'll just give you some highlights. Sitting by the lake in a tree on a warm summer evening. Going to the last prom before the pandemic all of my rock band performances, listening to Nancy sing SOS from Mamma Mia, all three twin days, room X, 12th nights, Lyndon's nail polish at the Halloween dance, going to see Hadestown for winter term, the absolute chaos that was Beauty and the Beast, AP English, singing Frozen 2 so loud, I thought I was going to lose my voice. I kind of did. Talking about YA fantasy novels, fighting about YA fantasy novels, Delaney, volume checks, putting cars in reverse, 
doing old man makeup, IHOP, very loud group FaceTime calls, and last but certainly not least, the high school musical script. Okay, back to the lessons. Aside from my friends and family, there have been two saving graces in my life, books and music. Books took precedent in middle school and music took over in high school. Mr. Hesse recently spoke about the power of the arts and music in particular, and that really resonated with me. When life gets too big or too scary, I turn to music. Music has saved me from myself, saved me from the world, and allowed me to breathe when I thought I couldn't anymore. It has brought me some of the best people in my life and endless amounts of joy. My voice is always there to comfort me if I am sad or lonely or scared, especially when no one else is. That's really what makes it beautiful. I learned to write music and express myself in ways I never thought I was good enough to do. Music and theater gave me a family and a community that I have relied on heavily throughout my time at Brooks. It's the gift that has seriously kept on giving, bringing me love and happiness beyond what I could ever imagine. An honorable mention in this category is academics. I am an academic at heart and I always will be. I love learning, I love school, and more than that, I love learning while doing well in school. I actually wrote one of my college essays about how since pre-K I have adored school. Adults think I'm weird, my friends think I'm crazy. I can't explain it beyond I have always been like this. But the reason why I do not consider academics a primary saving grace is because it's a two-sided coin. It has brought me joy, but it, it has also caused me great pain. During freshman and sophomore year, I very strongly equated my self-worth with my grades. School was my purpose for existing, and it got in the way of my learning. Getting anything less than a 90 would trigger intense panic attacks and anxiety. It got so bad that one time I started crying in chemistry class after receiving an 86 on some irrelevant quiz and Nancy had to comfort me in the middle of class. That was really embarrassing. I cannot tell you how many times Mrs. Davies, my incredible advisor, had to talk me out of my panic. Senior year is really the first year where I have valued my learning more than my grades. It took a long time and a complete rewiring of my thinking, but it made me a better student and a happier person. Through all of these highs and lows came lesson three. I now know that strength comes from inside me. My friends and family, the people who love me and support me are the ones to lift me up when I need it, but strength, that's internal. It can't come from someone else. Though I am well aware I have a lot more to learn, I am glad I know these things going into college because it's going to be a total reset. I will admit I am once again terrified of my freshman year, but I also know I am not even close to the same person I was four years ago. Throughout high school, I took risks I would have never thought I was capable of. I took AP French as a sophomore, even though I was certain I would fail. I didn't. I did French immersion for two weeks, despite having never been to Canada. I was the only junior in my AP English class and survived. I finally opened up to my friends and family about how I was really doing. I could go on with so many big and small examples, but every risk I took paid off. I trusted myself, even if at the time it seemed crazy. My risks and growth and patience and pain have resulted in some things I am really proud of. And I would like to share them with you all to give a better sense of what a Brooks education, aside from strong academics, can help you achieve. So here are the top 10 things I achieved at Brooks. I improved my voice a lot. Thank you, Griff. I became more confident. I learned how to talk to people, particularly on the phone. I learned to schedule my own appointments. I learned how to organize myself just in general. I learned how to deal with my hair, more or less. I learned that when given the choice, I should do the hard thing because as Larry Murphy says in Dear Evan Hansen, it's the hard way, but it's the right way. I learned to hate the college board. Good luck to all of you on your APs. I learned to fight for what I believe in. I learned to take the judgment of others with a grain of salt and recognize that 
Not everyone will understand what makes me tick, and that's okay. I need to do what makes me happy, even if it doesn't make sense to other people. So don't let fear of others and their judgment rule you. That's exactly how you miss out on life. Moral of the story, don't rely on other people to live your life for you. You want something, go for it. You want to achieve something, work for it. If you want to be better, if you want to live, do it. And do it for yourself and on your own terms. You cannot let other people dictate your life for you. That's the moral of my high school story. Thank you.